Hi, I'm Jason Inman. I like to read comic books. That's why in the week of July 2nd, I decided to read all the Marvel Now comic books that were published in the world. I'm going to give each of these a buy it, borrow it from a friend, or a skip it rating. But before I get to that, don't forget to go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic book site where they know that you love comic books, and we do too. And if you want to get 10% off Loot Crate, you can go to LootCrate.com slash John and get yourself some good geek gear and uh, help out the show here. Now enough of this jibba jabba, let's get on to some reviews. All new X Factor number 10. This is plain, simple superhero comics. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Let me tell you what I mean. Usually Peter David writes stuff like this. It's simply superheroes with powers fighting problems. And that's it. You can kind of come in and out of each issue. There is an ongoing storyline, but you don't really need to know it. And I gotta tell you this, this is the best I've liked Gambit in years. I like the new corporate uniforms. I like the new corporate everything. This book is a total win with great art. Buy it. Black Widow number eight. So Black Widow Natasha Romanoff has forgotten about the Winter Soldier because of comic books? Ah, doesn't quite make sense. And no offense to the writer, but it seems really, really dumb. But you know, other than that, this has some amazingly beautiful haunting art. It has some great spy versus spy, and there is some great relationship dynamics between the Winter Soldier and Black Widow, even though this really weird storyline is in it. If you want a good spy versus spy comic book, and you like Black Widow, this is the comic book for you. Buy it. Captain America number 22. So Captain America has been turned into an old man. Happy Independence Day, America! Celebration over! Anyways, the rest of this issue have some amazing solid art by Carlos Pacheo, Pacheo, I don't know how quite you say his name, loved his work for years, and the Avengers show up because the Red Skull has taken away Captain America's powers and Arnim Zola is there. And, you know, it's really nice because this title really shows how tightly interconnected the Avengers Marvel Universe feels, and that's a good thing, so this is a definite buy it. Iron Fist, the living weapon number four. So Iron Fist and this woman basically spend the whole issue arguing and cuddling, and that's about it. There's a little bit of kung fu cuddling. Da -da 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 -da. Get it? Kung fu cuddling? No? Ah, you guys are all rubes. I don't know what to No, I love you. Anyways, uh, this is not the Danny Ram that I know. This is not the Danny Ram that I enjoy reading, the, the one from the excellent Brubaker uh, Fraction Run. This is a very angry and a very temperamental Danny Ram who has a freak-out session in the bathroom that goes into a weird LSD nightmare thing. I don't know what's going on in this book, but I don't think that Marvel knows what this writer is doing with Danny Rand because I think any editor with with any kind of sense would be like, that's not Iron Fist. Hmm, maybe go back to the drawing board, my friend. So this is a skip it. Legendary Star-Lord number one, or as I like to call it, Marvel making every comic book look like the movie. ka -ching! Yeah, I know. I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. I actually like the costume. But actually, this issue really surprised me. It was a lot of fun. It was a space adventure rip-roaring. My only nitpick is, and if this was explained in the Guardians of the Galaxy comic book, please let me know in the comments below, why does Star-Lord suddenly have his movie costume? Because I kind of dug the blue armored look that Brian Michael Bendis and uh, 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 Steve McNiffin had given him in his other, in his, in his normal, his not-solo book. Uh, so where did he get the coat? I just want a, one line explanation. Just a one line explanation. For, for the comic book fanboys out there. But otherwise, this is a total buy. Sam Humphreys knocked it out of the park. Magneto number six. Holy crap, look at that cover. Magneto is death. <laughs> look at that thing. Basically, this issue is Magneto hunting about, down a bunch of Mr. Sinister's marauders. And that's about it. It's basically encapsulated as this whole fight. And it also shows the weakness of a premise of having Magneto as the main character of a book. Because once you have Magneto kill all the people that he needs to kill, what do you do? Where does it go? What is his purpose? That's a question I would love to be answered. Because this issue, he basically does that, and then he finds a bunch of cloned, or some sort of not cloned people, in tubes, and he's like, they shall be, they shall be my army, Charles. This, this is my army here. Test tube number one, test tube number three, test tube number five, Charles. I will bring you hope, old friend. I only ask that you don't stand in the way of my test tubes. That's about it. Borrow from a friend. 
Moon Knight number five. This is a simple, brutal fight of Moon Knight ripping through a bunch of thugs simply to get a girl. And you know what? It works on every level. And it works on every level because of the art of Declan Shelby. Amazing, amazing art. The paneling, the pacing of this book is fantastic. And I love that Moon Knight himself has no color. He's pure white. This is a brilliant book. You need to buy it. Warren Ellis is no, no slouch here. I'm not saying that Declan Shelby carries this book. Warren Ellis does an amazing job. But Declan Shelby is the next big artist. Watch for his name. Buy this book. New Warriors number six. Some very cartoony art guides this issue where the Avengers basically show up on the New Warriors doorstep and say, you can't be New Warriors anymore. You gotta be Avengers. And I don't know why I made Captain America very Southern. Maybe because this is Independence Day week of the United States. So let's just go with it. Basically, the New Warriors have teleported one one to Gore Mount one one to Gee one to Gar one to Gur Mountain the mutant mountain where Scarlet Witch grew up basically has been transported to a different place. The Avengers don't like this and they show up and they're just like, hey, we don't like you New Warriors too much, you know. But I do like this issue for the fact that it gave a purpose for the New Warriors. The New Warriors basically have, we have this thing to do. We have this thing to do now. We have a purpose. We have a goal. And I kind of like that. And because Scarlet Spider's on the team, I'm willing to give this book a chance. But this issue, borrowed from a friend. Original Sin number five. Unlike issue four, which really does, doesn't work, this book knocked it out of the park. Except for the fact that it makes a joke about Kansas in the second page. Yeah, that's right, Nick Fury and Jason Aaron. What do you got against Kansas? Sure, we don't believe in arts, in our education and evolution, but we made Superman, damn it. Fictionally. Anyways, uh, the basic revelation of this issue is that Nick Fury has basically been an assassin with a sniper rifle, killing aliens for the last 50 years. Yeah, he's been running S.H.I.E.L.D., but every time an alien got some gumption up to come to Earth, he picked up his giant space rifle and shot them in the head, including a very confusing scene where he almost shot Spider-Man, which really doesn't fit into the whole thing. This issue has a lot of revelations, has a lot of powerful moments, and it makes me very interested about where this book is going. Big improvement from the last issue, buy it. Rocket Raccoon number one, a case of mistaken murder. Rocket loving on a girl. A wrestling match where Groot fights a guy and all he says with every hit is, I am Groot. And Scotty Young art. This is an amazing book and a fun, fun read. I never thought I'd like both solo Guardians of the Galaxy books, but I do. Buy it. The Punisher number eight. This could have been a straight out action fight in the woods between Crossbones and the Punisher, but you know what? Nathan Edmondson changed it up. He allowed us to let the story be narrated by a soldier in the future in Afghanistan, and that Frank sacrificed himself to Crossbones, uh, let himself get captured, so this soldier could get away. And it's a very human moment. It's a very touching moment, and it gives a lot of purpose and uh, um, gravitas to the narration. And it really helps. This could have been straight out, fire guns, punch people in the face, action movie. But you know what? Because of this moment, it became something real. And real human moments like that can sometimes make or break a comic book and make a certain comic book issue become your favorite story. This was one of the better Punisher's issues I've read in a long time because of that moment. Definite buy it. Thor God of Thunder number 24. So Broxton, Oklahoma is completely destroyed and wiped off the map, which is kind of sad because that has always been one of my favorite parts of Thor mythology. I love the J. Michael Straczynski run where Thor shows up in Asgard and is like, Dine, I shall take it, Oklahoma, over it. Your cows beeth mine. Something like that. Um, but anyways, uh, Broxton has been destroyed, and so Thor gives up his chunk of Asgard, his castle, his personal castle, to the people of Broxton. Jane Foster and the Asgardian go off into space and we get a nice little touching moment in the far far future which future King Thor naming rivers and valleys and such after his friends this is a great great conclusion and I don't know if Jason Aaron is done with the book after this but you know what this would be a great way to walk off if he if, if he's done I don't know if he's done don't quote me on that do not I don't want to see that in USA Today tomorrow but great great ending epic epic story Amazing art, except for the artist trying a little bit too much in too many scenes to try to make Thor look like Chris Helmsworth. And it doesn't really work, my friend. You can really, really tell he's like, hey, look, Thor looks like Chris Helmsworth. Woo! Anyways, this is a definite buy it.
So do you like how the way I talk about comic books? Then why not see me talk about comic books live on my live stream? Sunday, 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 July 6th, 1 p.m. That's right, Pacific Standard Time on this channel. I'm doing a live stream. You can ask me questions. We can chat. We can talk. I will entertain you. Maybe Batman will show up. Maybe Ashley Victoria Robinson, a host of Girl Reads Comics, will show up. And many, many more. Come over there. Find out what's going to happen. And if you're in the future, hello, future people. And this is past July 6th. You know what? It's still on my channel go watch it as always that's it for the comic book reviews go to majorspoilers.com they have a lot of podcasts a lot of great content on there you can read comic book reviews any comic books that i don't cover go to majorspoilers.com and read them right there and you know what else is on majorspoilers.com geek history lesson my podcast where we take one character of pop culture and we tell you everything you need to know about them it's on stitcher it's on itunes it's on all the places you can listen about podcasts and if you want 10 percent off some geek gear and you want to help support this show go to lootcrate.com com slash John one enter the code John one you'll get geek gear every month this month is villain so it's gonna be some villainous stuff you know what I'm saying like maybe some Joker stuff maybe some Loki stuff that type of things could be showing up in this cool cool box as always read it leave a comment below tell me what you like tell me what you hated tell me whether you think that my shirt looks stupid yeah you can say that in the comments I don't care what you say in the comments just talk to me I'll talk back as always Please like, favorite, and share this video to all your friends. I'll see you on the live stream if you're going to show up. If you're, if this is after the live stream, hello, future people. I am Jason Inman. I love to read comic books, and I'll be seeing you. Just arm wrestle this giant statue, rip him off, and continue to lead the troops on their adventure. Next, they come to another giant owl stone thing, waving an axe. And what is the appropriate course of action? It is obviously to do a fastball special.